This allows us to produce much higher polygon counts without pushing the computer over its limits. HD mode allows us to determine how many more sub-D levels get applied and how much of the area we are working on in HD mode. This can be set in the preferences for HD mode. By having correct canvas size and HD polys visible, we can get a maximum quality textures produced within ZBrush. So just watch for a minute during this time lapse, just to see exactly how much fine detail we can get within this sculpt using HD mode. All brushes and alphas used here are all standard within ZBrush 4. Watch as you see me add immense detail. I'm using the lazy mouse, which gives you much more control over your strokes, and a few alphas, which gives me the shape of the brush strokes. It's a good idea to create a layer within ZBrush to hold this fine detailed data. This way we can turn the layer off, and we can even increase the threshold of the sculpted data. While we can work primarily within ZBrush directly on the 3D model, at times we may prefer to work on the actual 2D UV template. We can of course bypass ZBrush altogether when working in 2D, but we can also use ZApp Link to paint onto 2D templates. Then project back into polypainting data. Working directly with a 2D application, we can save some process stages and guarantee the best quality but if you wish to do it all within ZApp Link, we can. So right now I'm generating a texture map which has basic landmarks of the key areas of his body. This will help me know where on the UV map to align the textures and painting. First we need to produce a UV template. To do this we put our model into the lowest sub-D level, put polyframe on and then produce a UV check map. What this does is produces a UV check map with the wireframe baked into it. We next need to clone this texture. It may be required that you first flip vertically so the map is easy to work on. Set a flat material, or if you wish to, bacon material, select the desired one, then crop and fill to the canvas. We now go ahead and use the ZApp link. Before saving from Photoshop, I make sure that the wire is removed and I still have a painted area named layer one. At this particular stage, of course, I'm gonna import the actual UV guide that I made earlier on. This is gonna help me to find the specific area in which I need to actually be working on. It must also be mentioned that I'm only gonna be doing part of this as a demonstration so some of the actual wireframe is going to be seen still. When we have done our edits, we grab the dock, flip it, then apply this texture to our model. We can of course bake the texture map back into poly painting data. Remember also you have all of them really cool 2D brushes within ZBrush that you can use after you're bringing back the data from ZApp Link. 
You can work on this before grabbing the final dog. So as a quick recap, we looked at the following in this video tutorial. UV maps determine how well our texture gets applied to a 3D model. How a 3D model is normally split into UV shells for easy unwrapping and scaling. And that UV maps have no inbuilt pixel limit. The use of our models should determine how our UV maps are laid out and how the shape of the UV polygon should match that of the 3D model to avoid distortion. A checkered map is used to see how our UVs are laid out and to if there is any distortion currently there. Why it's important to adapt the texture map size according to how close you're going to get to the 3D model during render time. And if you're going to be using the 3D model for many usages, start at the higher quality larger maps and produce smaller maps from that larger map. We looked at how analyzing negative space we can determine how many pixels you really are using, more so how many pixels each UV shell is utilizing of the available space. Multiple UV maps are often used to get better resolution maps so that you don't have to share one UV area for your whole model. We looked at what polypainting is and how to calculate the maximum required polygons required for the polypainting to texture map size. We overview projection master and the limitations and advantages. We also looked at polypainting with the freedom to paint while requiring larger polygon counts to hold that detail. We see how polypainting can be used with spotlight to project photos and textures onto our model. Understanding the correct size of the textures needed for the funnel UV shells within the texture map was also looked at. For the ZLAP link, we looked at how we need to make the best from ZBrush Canvas Space and how it sets the document size for your chosen ZAP link 2D painting application. We can copy patches from photo references and paint directly as well to combine the power of 2D with 3D painting. We also see how we can tell if we have not used all of the available ZBrush canvas size, or if we have the wrong canvas size as to how much we need to rescale copy patches from a photo reference of the same document size. We looked at how we can use Z App Link with UV templates to paint and place photographs using a more traditional method of 2D texturing. We had a brief look at HD sculpting and painting and how we can break the limits of the polygon count by extremes. I hope you have found this overview helpful in that it shows some of the important things to consider and just a few of the many methods we can use within ZBrush for our texturing process. Thanks for watching and bye for now. Because our standard of videos takes a lot of time to produce, it's not always possible to give them away for totally free. Because I enjoy supporting the 3D community, I still want to produce these free videos now and again. These help you in your productivity and help me to know what you like, while showing what we can offer for our paid for videos that are coming up. So I've made this rather brief video to give you some insight into optimized texturing within ZBrush. This is for free, but at a lower resolution. This is all the chapters spread over two videos designed specifically for YouTube. So how can you help us keep producing these free videos? If you like what you see and would like to own your own personal high resolution copy, you can for a very small price of just £3.50. For PC users only, you will receive high bitrate WMV videos integrated into our own custom menu system where you can select the chapters. This is the same menu system we use for all of our full price video training. Currently, we don't support Mac menu systems, but Mac MP4 files are available at the same quality resolution. Of course, if you're happy to watch just the low resolution version, you're welcome to do so. Otherwise, it wouldn't be for free. By supporting CG Dreams, we can produce more short videos, 
like this at a quality that you would normally expect to pay for. The second way in which you can show your support is to give feedback. Your feedback really means a lot and a great deal to us and our tutors. This helps us to help you. Of course, you're welcome to leave feedback and thanks via the YouTube, but to help us process information faster, please use our contact form located at www.cgdreams.co.uk slash contact. On the form, choose topic related to feedback. If you want to give your support, please go to www.cgdreams.co.uk slash zbrush slash optimize where you can purchase a download version for £3.50. Thanks for your support.